Hi and welcome in this new video. My name is Mark Lemerti and I'm excited to see you for this one where we're going to review a new data engineering project on Data Project Hunt and this data engineering project is the Batch Data Pipeline 1. So let's take a look at it. As you can see right here, we have a beautiful diagram. So it looks like this project uses many different tools. So let's see why it is using those tools. Um, so this project demonstrates a batch data pipeline following the Medallion architecture. So if you don't know the Medallion architecture, it's a very common architecture, bronze, silver, gold. The idea is in the bronze layer, you're gonna extract the raw data and store the raw data as they are. Then in the silver layer, you will clean that data. So you're gonna store a cleaner version of your raw data that come from the bronze layer. And finally, in the gold layer, this is where you have like curated data for your use cases. It showcases how to ingest, clean, validate, aggregate, and visualize sales data using modern data engineering tools, all containerized with Docker for easy deployment. And we have a bunch of tools, which Airflow is obviously a great one, but then we have DuckDB, Delta, Lake, Minio, Trino, and so on. Okay, that looks nice. We have the data flow here, the key features. So again, we have the Medallion architecture. Data quality first, we have a bunch of data quality checks and it looks like this project is using Soda. So if you don't know Soda, I highly recommend you to look at this uh, framework. In my opinion, it's one of the easiest and most powerful data quality uh, framework out there. I love Soda. I'm not gonna lie, it's been a while since I touched it, but I think Soda is great. And then, okay, so we have like some best practices and so on. So let's take a look at the project right here. So we click on view on GitHub. Okay, well, it looks like this project has many stars. So that seems to be a, a solid project. Let's scroll down. We have an overview of the project, the architecture again. Then we have the data flow, the tech stack, the project structure, nice. We also have the setup instructions. Please, whenever you create a project, don't forget to put the setup instructions. If you want to have people trying your project, this is important. <laughs> you know, like sometimes this is missing. We have the data generation and ingestion, great. Data processing pipeline. So it looks like for every step of the project, for every building block of the project, we have the corresponding instructions, which is great. I think this readme is definitely uh, super valuable. And we even have the final output of the project, which is this dashboard. And that's a good thing to do, right? Like whenever you create a data engineering project, if you can show what your project does at the end, I think it adds a lot of value. Okay, well, let's take a look at the setup instructions so we can actually run the project in local and verify that everything works, at least for us. So we have some prerequisites. I think everything is fine for me. So let's copy that line to clone the repo. Okay, we clone the repo. Perfect, now I'm gonna go in the new folder batch data pipeline. And now I just need to run this command to start the project. So let's see if that works. All right, after a while, I've been able to run all the Docker containers for the project, but there were some issues. The first issue was related to the Marquez port, which was set to 5,000. I had to change it to 50-50 because 5,000 was already used on my Mac. And also I had to change the Marquez database. So right here, instead of Airflow, I put Marquez. And just like that, all the Docker containers are now running, as you can see here. So let's see if we can access the Airflow UI. Okay, on localhost 8080, the username is admin and the password is admin as well. And we can see the data pipeline, sales data pipeline. It looks like it works because we already have one DAG run and that pipeline runs every hour. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so we have all of those tasks. If we take a look at the graph. All right, so we can see the pipeline here with the different tasks, load dimension tables, ingest to bronze, transform to silver, validate quality, should aggregate, aggregate to gold, and skip aggregation. So in fact, if we click on the diagram, we can see that all tasks have been executed except the skip aggregation. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pause the DAG right now and see what we have on the dashboard. To access it, you have to use this URL with the following credentials. However, for me, that didn't work. I had to create an account and the dashboard wasn't there. To fix that, I had to open my Docker desktop. And then you see there is a container metabase setup that was not running. I had to run this Docker container because that's actually triggers the script to create 
everything with the account and also the dashboard. That's exactly what you can see here. So I just use the credentials like that. I click sign in and I should be able to see the dashboard sales analytics. So let's take a look at it. So we have this dashboard, we can open it and boom, that's amazing. We can see the total revenue today, the transaction, the product by revenue and the customer value distribution. This is great. And obviously the daily revenue trend will fluctuate as I keep running the Airflow DAG every hour. All right, so this project works, which is nice. I just had to fix a few things, but otherwise everything looks fine. Now let's take a look at the Airflow DAG because I'm not an expert in the other tools. So feel free to give your feedback if you truly know um, Soda, Metabase, uh, Trino, Minayo, and so on. But let's take a look at the Airflow DAG to see if we can give any constructive feedback. All right, so we have one pipeline sales pipeline with the following description, which is cool. And then we have the imports. So you can see that this DAG is running in Airflow 2. That's why we have Airflow.decorators. In Airflow 3, you should use Airflow.sdk, right? And I, I think you can even use Airflow.sdk in Airflow 2.9 already. So Airflow SDK, you will import the DAG and task decorators from it. Same thing for the exceptions. And the branch Python operator, you can use the decorated version as well. There is a decorator for the branch Python operator. You don't have to use the branch Python operator if you want which I think is better if you are already using the task decorator. I think it's better to use the uh, branch decorator instead. All right, so next we have the default arguments right here. We can see that there is an execution timeout, which I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea to have an execution timeout for all of your tasks. However, I'm not sure if it's the best practice to set the same execution timeout for all of your tasks. I mean, you can expect that you will have a different running time for every task. So that's why I think it's better to define the execution timeout at the task level and not at the DAG level like you are doing it right now. Because again, you apply the same timeout for all of your tasks. Um, I think the author was trying to set a global timeout for the DAG so that the DAG does not run indefinitely, which is the default value. In that case, if you want to do that, you have the DAG run timeout. Okay, you have the DAG run timeout that you can set to 30 minutes. And in that case, the DAG after 30 minutes, if it runs longer than 30 minutes, it will fail. Okay, so that's what I will do instead. Then email on failure and email on retry, you can remove those um, arguments because they are set to false by default. All right, next we have the DAG decorator, which I think it's a good idea to use. You can also use the context manager with, just don't do it with DAG equal DAG, please. This is very old fashioned. Uh, so don't use that notation anymore. Then we can see the DAG ID is defined. So one thing to know when you are using the DAG decorator, the DAG ID of your DAG will be automatically the name of the function that the DAG decorator decorates. In that case, sales delta pipeline. So unless you specifically want to give a different DAG ID, you don't have to specify the DAG ID here. Another feedback, you should not use the schedule interval anymore. Instead, you should use schedule, okay? Because the schedule interval, you know, historically you are able to schedule your DAGs only on time, but now with Airflow, you can schedule your DAGs on assets, uh, using a timetable, uh, using uh, event-driven scheduling as well. So there are many different ways of scheduling your DAGs that are not strictly based on time. That's why instead of scheduling interval, you have schedule. Next, we define the start date, the catch-up parameter, very good idea to set it to false in Airflow 2.x. Keep in mind in Airflow 3.x, you don't have to set the catch-up parameter to false anymore. That's the default value. Then we have the default args, the tags, good idea to set your tags that will help you to filter your DAGs on the Airflow UI. A description, good idea. So I can know what this DAG does without having to look into the code. We can even see that the author is using docmd. So when you use docmd like that, you don't, I mean, one thing that I recommend you to do is put this at the top of your Python file and then you use doc like that. Okay, so it's much cleaner. So that's why I will do instead. And then the max active runs to one. It makes sense if you don't want to have multiple DAG runs of this DAG running at the same time. Sometimes uh, you cannot do that. Okay, so it depends on your use case. All right, so that's it for 
the DAG arguments, let's take a look at the tasks. So we can see that the task decorator is used, which is a good idea. Each time you need to use the Python operator, I recommend you to use the task decorator instead. We have the task ID again, unless the name is different, unless you want to specify a different name than the function name, you don't have to specify the task ID here. So you will save some code lines right here. Inlets as well, if you don't have any inlets, don't use that parameter. Um, actually, inlets is a little bit advanced. Inlets and outlets, the idea of those parameters is to help you for data lineage when you use another tool like Marquez, and that's exactly what this project is doing. So you will rarely define the inlets, but with the outlets, you can see that when you specify an outlet like that, you are saying this task is modifying this file. Okay, file here is an old notation um, for defining uh, assets. It's better to use the asset directly. Okay, file was actually a, 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 like a, a class that was used before uh, Open Lineage became the standard with Airflow. Okay, so you should not use file anymore. You should use asset instead. Okay, so next we have the task. Okay, so I don't have anything to say here. Uh, the, the, the author is using Airflow skip exception. That's a good idea. So remember that you can leverage Airflow exceptions to change the behavior of your tasks. Uh, so that's, that's a truly a, a good idea. Because for example, here, instead of having the task that fails, the task will be skipped because of this exception, Airflow skip exception. Then we have another task, load dimension tables. Okay. Okay. And then we have this task again, process to silver. Again, we have the inlets and outlets. You don't have to uh, specifically pass the inlets or outlets parameter. I mean, at least like the inlets parameter, because if, for example, this task needs this asset, then you can pass it as a parameter of your task. Okay. And Airflow will be automatically able to infer uh, the inlets of your task. Um, okay. So for good for this one as well. I don't have anything to say for the tasks. Maybe this should aggregate. So here the context, I mean, it's up to you. You can do that. You can pass the context for your task like that, or you can just directly pass the values that you want to access. So for example, here you see DAG is accessed from the context. So you can just pass DAG directly like that, and then just set it to known, just to make sure that you remember that this uh, parameter is not passed by you, but as soon as the task runs, Airflow will automatically pass the DAG object to the task. Okay, so that's one way to remove the context. Uh, you know, you can just do something like that then. Okay, but up to you. Uh, some people prefer to use context instead. Okay, uh, next, I think, I think we are good for this one. Yeah, same thing here. So this task is using that. That's a good idea. Uh, you just specify all the assets that your task is uh, updating. So that's why we have the three assets right here. So all the tasks seem to be uh, pretty similar, right? Uh, all right. And finally, we have the dependencies. Okay. For the branch Python operator, again, you can use the at task branch. Okay, you can use the at task branch instead of the branch Python operator. So you can stick to the task flow API because here all tasks are using decorators. So I think it's better if you stick to the task dot branch decorator instead of the branch Python operator. And uh, okay. And I think like the dependencies, everything is looks fine. Uh, this, you can remove that. Okay, you can remove that part. You don't need that anymore that will work. Um, and maybe like one thing, I imagine that you are passing some data between bronze and silver and silver to uh, gold. Uh, you should, don't hesitate to leverage, like that's exactly what you are doing here. For example, you are passing the bronze result to the process to silver uh, task. Maybe you should do the same for the gold uh, and so on. All right, so I think the DAG is solid. Uh, just a few uh, things to improve, but that's my feedback for this DAG. Obviously, I highly recommend you to try to run this project yourself. If you are an expert in other tools, I would love to know your feedback in the comments below. Again, the idea is to provide constructive feedback so we can all learn together. I hope you enjoyed that video and I see you for the next one. Take care.